Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order as the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia under the Comerty Mikhail Oktan. Last episode we did, I'm pretty sure we finished off all of the economy things. Yes we did, yes we did, and we got cracking into the military trade. Now, off we go. Gunsmithing program gets event national or gains national spirit. Efficient gunsmithing and manufacturing, which grants production efficiency growth plus 5%, as well as factory output plus 10%. The warlord armies of West Russia only scarcely had modern equipment to rely on in most of the battles we fought on our way to regional hegemony. Both sides were primarily equipped with surplus weapons from the Great Patriotic Conflict, with even 10-year-old hardware being somewhat of a luxury. This will not suffice in our future battles. The enemies will we have ahead of us will be larger better better equipped and more industrially formidable than our comparably meager previous foes. Now what's this? We're all good for morale, I know that. Close it up with intentions. Do not want to see it. Decrease this stuff, yes. Black market luxury trading light. What's that? Uh, give me this. Not that. Where is it? There it is. Stability. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of it. Do we have any um, sort of societal developments? Um, close that up, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, the corruption thing. Yeah, we'll leave that open. We do want to reduce corruption. Actually, I think I'll leave the black market stuff alone. <laughs> not only not only because we're playing Octan, but just because um, just because I, I'm not too concerned about the the resulting kind of effects of the of it at the moment. Yeah, not not too concerned at all. Do want to decrease that corruption as well. Are you all trained up? You are. <coughs> I think probably increase that, yeah. Maybe decrease the rest of that as well and put it into it, yeah. Oh, nice spike. Come on, let's go. Bloody hell, come on. Oh, it's not the African Devastation, is it? Or have we, have we already got that this game? I don't think we have. Well, I've never seen that before. Wow. Never seen Germany go after Small Hat Madagascar, that's weird. And you immediately peaced out. Alrighty. Kind of odd, but whatever. Oh, yeah, Dad, just uh, deselect that. Don't care. Now, improve oversight. Yeah, that's like 20 for like 25 physical power for only uh, like a reduction in 5 corruption. That's not good. Now, modern air force. 350% research bonuses for aircraft. Since the downfall of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, the vast majority of Russia's battles have been fought on the ground. Most of these scattered warlord states left behind had neither the funds nor the equipment to maintain a large air force. Our, our ground superiority allowed us to bulldoze our way through Russia. But this tactical state of affairs will not last. Our future opponents will be larger, more modern states, easily capable of fielding jet fighters and bombers. The ROA needs to react with the utmost speed to these changing circumstances and create a new air force with the product with the productive capacity of West Russia's factories behind us. Building planes is finally within our grasp. Subjugating our eastern rivals will require taking to the skies, and the ROA's best are well up to that task. It just it just won't require aircraft. It just will not. Because aircraft in the new order do nothing. <coughs> Ultranat. Menchikov. Bergsis Denikin. <laughs> Denikin is going to rise out of his grave. Lead Russia to glory. You can actually be drawn to the battle plan. Just have it ready. And there are a place up here called Novi Port. Yeah, Novi Port. Which isn't even a port. Oh, is that the... Um, yeah, it is good. Investigate corruption. Stop. Now... Pop that, pop that, and reduce the debt. Now, investigate corruption. Oh, we're clawing our way... <laughs> we're somehow clawing our way back. Fantastic. What was that? Something happened to Central Siberia? Kind of became more blue. Oh, did you like select? Damn, um, I don't know. What's his face as a successor? 
Yeah, you're off them. So yeah, I think you just selected. Um, I think you just selected. No, then again, nah, you couldn't have just done it there because you have to finish this first. But yeah, you definitely did select um, Yuri as successor. Otherwise, you'd be despotist. We might actually see a peaceful reunification here between. Um, actually, no, I don't think. Ah, uh, never mind. Actually, I don't think. I don't think these two can reunite. Yeah. No. What's this? Board heavy machinery, yes, please. Now, getting our toes wet, three fifty percent research bonuses for ships. Unlike with our nascent air force, building a strong navy is a relatively mild concern, at least for now. The reunification conflicts ahead of us will be fought into almost entirely on or over solid ground. Still, it would be prudent to create a small navy both to police the waters we do border and to set up a framework for after we achieve total unification, at which time a large navy would be necessary. Refitting several ships from the Soviet era for the present era should do, at least for now. For leadership, we shouldn't spare anyone vital. Um, this is not a serious priority at the moment, but few would turn down the chance to be the first admiral of the new Russia. We may be starting small, but our successors will surely appreciate our foresight um, for beginning to establish the navy now. I'm, I'm pretty sure Octan isn't really planning about uh, successors. I'm pretty sure it's just him that he's worried about. Ooh, three infantry divisions? Pretty sure these are infantry divisions. Wait, what? Are the tank divisions... No. Are you shitting me? They're still called the Cotton Air because I hadn't changed up the name yet. I don't know if I can deal with that, man. Nah, get rid of that, get rid of that. Don't care. Are you all like that? You are. That's too bad. <coughs> oh. Oh, it's because, yeah, fuck. Now nah, there we are. Oh, there we are. Well, that was unfortunate, but it's not even 1968 yet, so we'll be fine. Now, oh, bloody hell, we are so far behind from the industry. Oh my god, that's bad. <coughs> How are we with um, this? Yeah, yeah, we haven't done any of that yet. Oh my god, this is not going well. Modernization of the ROA. Three fifty percent research bonuses for infantry weapons. Veterans of the ROA long for the day when fighting will end. Their long suffering weapons await patiently their final day of work. Modernization seeks to phase out obsolete and obsolescent equipment to leave our men equipped with good quality modern weapons. It does not mean an obsession with the cutting edge, but rather a strong baseline for all of our troops. Modernization is an ongoing effort and is never truly complete. Nevertheless, modernization will leave us ready for anything, indeed. Are we ready to research AKs and RPGs as soon as we Yeah we are. Good. Air Force training up. All trained up. I think I think they should be. Yeah. yeah, they're all good. Good. What are we getting a month? Is it 50? I think it's 50. Yeah, 50 infantry women, bruh. By the way, we need to build up a lot of political power too, so that we can be coring Omsk and uh, Kazakhstan, as well as just stuff for... Um, uh, societal developments as well as uh, medical, or not medical supplies, but um, reducing corruption, yeah. Oh, thank you. Don't care about, oh, yeah, probably go for that. Mechanization of the R-Way. Two 50% research bonuses for APCs, one 50% research bonus for IFEs and MBTs. The West Russian conflict and the anarchy saw our men carry kilos and kilos of equipment into and out of conflict zones. Wounded comrades were often abandoned as our men were unable to carry them quickly enough to field hospitals. Strong points were nightmares to capture as light infantry was exposed to artillery and machine gun fire. Mechanization is the principle that sees our men rely on an ever-expanding fleet of motorized and armored vehicles. Vehicles that are able to transport them to battle to survive them, um, to support them during offensives and shield them during firefights. It will be a costly process and one that may not be completed for years, yet any amount of armor and speed will be a great force multiplier. Indeed. 
Now these are infantry divisions. There we are. Pop them in there. Probably even it out a little bit first. I think I'll put all my tanks down here so that they can kind of blitz across these open plains. Don't want them, them charging headlong into the mountain, that would not be good at all. Thank you. Oh, I'll have to do this one as well. Damn it. Now, standardization of the R-Way. Two 50% research bonuses for support artillery and one 50% research bonus for motorized equipment. Our military industry is now home at a good pace and all of our men are equipped. It is finally time for standardization to begin in full. The days where five soldiers carry ten calibers of weapon is over. Standardization will become one of the guiding principles of the Russian army. Standardized weapons, yes, but also standardized clothes, equipment tools, standardized food supply and storage. Standardized leadership structure. The Germans sought to beat discipline into us. We shall, in turn, march out into all of Russia with the price, with the precise set of instruments needed for victory. Indeed. I find it odd that, like, in one of the events, um... Like the ROA, like an, like an, an ROA veteran was me was mentioning that um, you were lucky if you got an STG forty four. Like, so was most of the Germans. Like, I, I guess in this kind of timeline, Germany just makes a shitload more STGs to the point where even the ROA was getting some of them. Kind of weird. Or maybe they just had a load of them left over from the uh, the conflict, so that when the West Russian conflict um, started, they could just kind of give them some, but not all. Look at that. You get this. You get the, the, the uh, new AKs there, yeah. And you get, yeah, you get the new RPGs. Thank you. Now, value for money, that looks pretty good. No, this one. Now, future conflict. Three fifty percent research bonuses for, for electronics. Blue Sky Research is in a, military, in a military setting. Consists of researching things that may not have immediate use or, or applicability. Yeah, applicability. While this type of research should never monopolize all of a nation's resources, it can pay big dividends to stay on the lookout for technologies that are just five to ten years away from being relevant. As our industrial base expands and, and, and as our army gains experience fighting various enemies, old ideas must be investigated anew. Who knows what the future holds for the Russian army? Indeed. What was the other one here? Ah, yes, this. That is well. That's actually probably, probably yeah. I should probably do that first. Now nah, never mind. I'll sit this. Twenty-two percent consumer goods. Hmm. Bring that down to seventeen. Bring bring it down to twelve. Yeah, we should be pretty good. Hey, fifty-two and um, point five five billion dollar GDP. Very nice. Pop those boosts. There we are. Yeah, like, we have off them Siberia, which means that, um, what's his face? Puri is here. But I don't think they can reunite peacefully, which is, yeah, I don't think they can. Now, value for money. Replace efficient gunsmithing manufacturing with state-of-the-art weaponry. Effective change production efficiency cap plus 10%, growth plus 5%, and factory output plus 5%. Our ambitious program of weapon and equipment development has inevitably run into delays and problems. New weapons and vehicles encounter teething problems on their first distributions. Panther moment. All of this is natural and expected by our engineers and officers. Underperforming designs are being reworked or removed from farm production. Improvements are made to industrial processes. Uh, day by day we calculate the perfect ratio of money to effectiveness for every piece of kit and work to improve it. Good. Our societal developments are coming along nicely, actually. A lot of them are still early stages. It's only the arrows that look good. I think I said that in the last in the in the last uh, Octane episode. Yeah, it's it's the arrows look great, but they're still pretty early days. That's pretty good. Academic base one sixty two. They're getting a lot of political power. Nice. Then, yeah, we need a lot of political power. Yeah, we need some. We need a lot of it.
Hmm. I think I might take this. Ah, there we are. Thank you. Now. Green water navy, full mobiliz- Ooh, total mobilization. That's nice. I want that. Gr yeah. Green water navy. Uh, what's this? Investigate corruption, yes. Do that. Now, green water navy add four naval dockyards in Arkhangelsk. As more international commerce comes online and as our ambitious uh, as, and as our ambitions realize themselves, it is time to expand our efforts to reach a green water navy. Such a fleet would be able to patrol our corner of the Baltic Sea. We don't have a Baltic Sea, yeah. Um, and, and bloody the nose of any fleet attempting amphibious assaults in our territory. The type of ships needed are small and within our reach. Conventional submarines and destroyers will pose a threat to any foreign presence in our home water as long as they are well supported by land-based aviation. Yes, I think I think we're uh, we're a bit too small and weak to. Um, be thinking about destroyers, probably more like corvettes, yeah. So though, Russia's got some nice corvettes, even um, in our in our own timeline in the current day. Some very nice corvettes, with some very nice missiles. Kaliber and Ks, hell yeah. Why aren't you training? Why are you weird? Being weird. God damn it! You could have been trained up. I think train up more of these, yeah. If we can. Oh. Artillery. That'll do, though. That will do. Honestly, your biggest problem is West Russia is uh, industry. You have so much manpower, you just can't equip all of it. <coughs> well, I probably could if I was doing something really simple, like I don't know, infantry and art, like just infantry and art, you know, artillery. Yeah. Now, just get those building convoys. Don't care. Now, full mobilization. It's rare you get to go to total mob. Now, it changes economic focus law to total mobilization, which grants daily political power gain minus 0 0.5. Fuck. What does it currently grant? Early mob. Hurry up. This is bad. Oh man, that's so bad. I'm gonna take that last. Fortification. We'll build a series of forts in the south. Our frontiers with the Germans and the other Russian warlords. Well, well we're not really warlords anymore. Are thousands of kilometers long. As such, it is impossible to fortify every uh, centimeter of it. Nevertheless, we have learned much about fortification efforts in the in the conflicts of unification and in the West Russian conflict. By fortifying important valleys and roads throughout our border, and by creating well armed redoubts, we can slow down any invasion and extract heavy casualties in the beginning of any conflict. These positions will be as important when we go on the offensive as fallback areas should attack plans go awry. Indeed. Yeah, that total mob is gonna suck. Political power. These tanks? Yeah, they are. Um, pop you in here. Oh, not Kazakhstan. Hello? The fuck? There we are. Is he actually a time travel? No, trickster damage. Do we actually have a tank travel? That'd be great if we did. No, damn it. I wish you could integrate some generals like you can with Viaka. It'd be cool to integrate the, the Viaka general staff. But no. But again, yeah, that, that actually, never mind. I don't think we should be able to. That's just, yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Now, prioritize military industrial development. The 
it said we were building fortifications in the south. Where's that? Eh, whatever. Now, harmonization. Army experience plus 20, 250% research bonuses for land doctrine. Uh, conflict has become a complicated business. Every year there are new weapons to equip our soldiers with, new training methods that better prepare the men for combat, new tactics that will provide the crucial edge on the battlefield. If this were not enough to keep track of, each of these new developments is supposed to work in conjunction with one another. We have managed to keep our men equipped with modern weapons and trained to modern standards. Our generals are keeping up to date with the latest developments in strategic thought. However, our army still feels somewhat discordant. Um, yeah, yeah, discordant. Our, uh, our officers must know how they can use modern tanks and IVs in their maneuvers most effectively. The men must be trained with modern rifles and anti-tank equipment. It is not enough for the military to be well equipped and well led. Every part must move together in harmony. Only then will we have a modern professional military fit for a nation, not a warlord. Yes, combined arms operations. Difficult to pull off and scary, but incredibly effective. RPGs, very nice. This more tanks. It is good. Now we'll actually wait for this to finish so that we can do actual land up and stuff. Here we are. More tanks, hell yeah! Oh, but isn't like aren't some of them kinda wonky? They are a bit wonky, alright. I knew something was weird. Conservative victory in Canada. Yeah, that was weird in the uh, Cheetah series where um, we're watching. Um, I might leave that alone. Or will I? No, I won't. I won't. I'll go for it. Was that decreased black market arms trading? Yeah, do it. And allocate education funding. Yes. Full mobilization. No, yeah, I already. Yeah. Daily political power gain minus 0 0.5, consumer goods factory 10%, production efficiency cap plus 10 uh, blah, blah, plus 10%, factory output plus 20%, dockyard output plus 20%, military factory construction speed plus 50%, civilian factory construction speed minus 50%. Usually I always build infrastructure on all the resource areas and then build civvies on it. That's, hmm. That's not going to work out this time, oh, excuse me. Now, Western Russia is now reunified and with the most populous region of the nation firmly under our control, we are now able to decide how that population will serve their motherland. The decades of devastation Russia endured annihilated everything resembling the national industry. This now provides us, this provides us with a chance to start fresh and create a new economy uh, that is fine-tuned to serve our purposes in the short term. At least that will involve a focus on rapidly increasing military production as well as, prepare, as, well, as, well, as we prepare for the looming conflicts to our east and west. Each and every citizen will do their part to build a new, stronger Russia. When the next conflict comes to the motherland, we will not need to, tra to transition to a war economy. We will already have it in place. Good. And that some some graphical change happened. Some graphical change happened again. It's really weird. I hate it. <laughs> Fucking yikes! Barely one a day. Now the army of uh, national liberation. Replace slipped leash with Army of National Liberation. Effective change, recruitable population, plus 0.7%. That's pretty big. Attack, plus 4.5%. Division recovery rate, plus 5%. War support, plus 15%. Gets sent a new army for a new Russia. And unlocks decisions to exert influence in the Southern Urals. I guess we could have done through the army tree if we wanted to. Kind of weird, but whatever. Now. Oh. Do that. Actually, go back over to the army tree. Oh yeah, we haven't finished that yet, of course. Damn it. Never mind, go back to that. Oh, yeah, we're all good, yeah. Now, 
the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia is not a warlord state, it is a modern nation, and it finally has an army befitting its status. The ROA has evolved from a band of unmotivated conscripts it once was. It is now a fully modernized, vicious fighting force ready for modern conflict against industrialized opponents. Russia's new army will be the spear we use to skewer the traitors and bandits to our east. Some of the government question if we have placed too much emphasis on developing the military at the expense of other areas. They say the Russian economy is not yet developed enough to support such large and advanced army. Perhaps they are right, but it is unimportant. Russia will be reunified and it will be the nation with the best army that reunites us. We will make sure that it is us. Yes. Well, the army isn't going to get any better by not putting money into it, so... Checkmate. <laughs> 54.56 billion, very nice. Nearly clicked that away, damn it. That was close. Now, oh, contacts abroad, yes. Oh, political power plus 50, thank god. Now, a new army for a new Russia. A simpler man than Chairman Octan could not have pulled off such a long set of reforms through the ROA's increasingly convoluted command structure. Now the fruit of reforms were on display as the new ROA prepared its final set of failed exercises. Ooh, new divisions. Infantry? Probably. Yeah, infantry. Good enough. There we are. Don't suppose we can get any more of those, can we? Nah, still, still short of artillery. Damn it. Now... Forty-eight divisions, not bad at all. Over four hundred forty-one thousand men. Now, as the ROA prepared its final set of field exercises, hordes of conscripted light infantry prepared for battle, kept hungry by constant discipline and motivated by endless propaganda. Weak to general cowards held the rest of Russia, and there was a fortune in the, in the making for bold soldiers like them. Behind them marched the veterans of the ROA, hardened by years of struggle. Only the toughest. Uh, had made it this far, and this kernel of elite troops would be the anvil upon which the enemy would be shattered. Behind them further, new vehicles every day, new tanks rolled out of production lines and, and into ROA garrisons. The ROA had won Western Russia's industry, and now this industry would protect the brave men that would liberate Russia. The grim enthusiasm of this army closely approximated, but did not quite resemble the ROA of old. Resigned professionalism had given way to bloody enthusiasm. The officers' corps, once united by a dream of something bigger, now fought for glory and loot. The upcoming wars might very well be the ROA's last hurrah as a disciplined formation, as the chairman's greed had corroded his army into a set of savage, brutal riders from the steppe. Okay. Come on, lads. Wealth and glory await. Yes. Oh, and Omsk just flipped to a despotist, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Now, contacts abroad. Political power plus 50 gets vent a friend from above, from a friend from abroad. Uh, one of the most obvious benefits of the new Grand Marshal is his deep web of contacts and smugglers that wind its way through Russia and beyond. A Frankenstein's monster of, uh, of German collaborator, Russian or otherwise, foreign individuals and networks that Mikhail Oktan has long taken advantage of. While this has previously benefited Oktan and... Uh, ooh, new divisions, very nice. New tanks. Yes. Uh, and those he chose to bestow his gifts upon in exchange for favours and loyalty, it's time for these smugglers to benefit all of Russia. Octan will talk to those that he has bought east of the Urals to see if they or anyone else, um, that or anyone that they know who is anyone of anywhere, would be willing to play for the ROA's team. The Grand Marshal, of course, has ensured that anyone who is willing to cooperate with the committee will be handsomely rewarded. Uh, considering how well he has treated his officers thus far, we can expect that many will be tempted by his offer. France sides with Italy. Good. Pact of, Pact of Rome this game, I believe. No, that must be the cheetah game, damn it. Or, it, yeah, I don't think it's even Scorza. I think um, the Sockdem guy. Yeah. And oh, what's that decision? Yeah, I say property relief programs. There we are. Bloody hell, that's a long thing. Ooh, daily physical power gain plus 0 0.25, very nice. So we've gone for that first, damn it. God damn it. Now, friend from abroad, it would hardly be proper for a statesman, let alone the man put in charge of the restoration of Russia to frequent, let alone be familiar with the shady back alleys of what typically passes as a settlement in ROA controlled Western Russia. However, Mikhail Oktan was far from the typical statesman. He reveled in the uh, yeah, he reveled in the shadows, likening himself to a puppet master of play, jangling around uh, those who he bought or blackmailed as if they were marionettes. Setting up crop deals and meeting wealthy magnates in a ding in a dingy rundown bar where Octan frequently held court, the types of place where you had to take three alleys from the main street to get there. A special session was taking place. Ever since he 
had attained his position at the top of the Orway's leadership, Octant had been frequenting his old contacts less and less, relying on his more trusted and thuggish cronies to tie up loose ends and ensure both compliance and loyalty among those who still had their uses. However, uh, music played loudly and the racious nature of his, of his little uh, back alley hideaway betrayed his presence, sitting at his table that he had specifically made up for himself, seemingly sitting court among the bar patrons and flanked on all sides by the scariest bodyguards he could buy. Octan faced a trio of less than savory Russians who lived beyond the Urals. These three men, or the three men, were called themselves the Gontara brothers, and while none of them were related, each one was nastier than the next. Once one, a trader from Nizhny Novgorod who dabbled in less savory trades than guns. The second, an ashamed made man from the thief's, from the thief's territory, and the third, a disgraced middling officer from the city of Tumen, accused by Kaganovich's commissars as corrupt. Each one of them had fled from their lives, fleeing a stark justice only to redefine themselves as smugglers who worked for the most powerful or anyone else who would pay more. The trio had made their first fortune smuggling contraband eastwards across the Earls. They were still under his employ, but now they'd, uh, they'd been called to talk to the new Grand Marshal. Now that he was fully in control of Western Russia, after ensuring that all three of them had some of the nicest vodka in the joint, Octan opened. Gentlemen, I'm sure all three that all three uh, of you have heard about my promotion. But of course, Grand Marshal, a big step up, that's for sure, the man from Tumen stated. Then I want to have to remind you of how important you are to me, more now more than ever, and how vital it is to make sure you stay important. Nerves gave way to alcohol, however, as Octan and his smugglers drank the night away, each party assured of their continued prosperity. Fuck me, that was a long event. A Kafka-esque display. Mm. I was only reading about Kafka stuff for, uh, recently. Now, the Samara Declaration replaces the Smolensk Manifesto with the Samara Manifesto. Would, would not be the Samara Declaration. Anyway, effective change, daily political power gain plus 0 0.25, fantastic, and daily authoritarian Democrat support minus 0 0.01. Good. Should have done this way sooner. I'll remember, I'll, I'll remember next time I'm playing Bunyachenko. I tend to play Bunyachenko when Tuvok Theory releases, along with a whole host of other kind of money people. Um, the Smolensk Declaration has long been seen as a useless scrap of paper signed during the West Russian conflict. It declares the Soviet government as an historical aberration and announces the right of every citizen of the former Soviet Union to freedom and self-determination. Now, what's this stuff? Investigate corruption, yes. Invest in scientific research, yes. Does that get rid of um, everything? Oh my god, that's good. Negligible corruption. We just got 20% consumer goods out of that. Hell yeah. 70% octane stability. Wholesome octane ending. Wholesome. Now. Uh, where was I? A scrap of paper as it may be, the Smolensk Declaration has been the start of our glorious campaign to free Russia from our enemies. A new declaration has been issued in Samara where our men broke free from German servility. This new document will paper our will paper over our controversial history and present anew the ROA as the organism of liberation and unification of all of Russia. The declaration will equally denounce foreign interference in Russian affairs and warn the world of our resolve for a strong and independent motherland. Indeed. Industrial equipment. Nice. Oh, this is really good. Yeah, banking partners. Nice. Now, the Samara Declaration. Attention to all Russians to the east of the Urals. The Russia that you know, the Russia of decadence, corruption, dictatorship is dead. The west of our nation has been united under the administration of the Provisional Commissariat, which aims to protect the Russian nation and all of her people from the dangers of Redism and Tsarism, each of which would bring about disastrous consequences for our nation. Instead, a state free of the stain of leftism or monarchism has been established. Our goal is to protect the Russian people from the dangers of these ideologies and extremism in general, as well as to forge a strong state free of foreign influence, and we must prevent another tragedy like the West Russian conflict. The content of the pamphlet has been as baffling to the village's priest as it was to the individual who had picked it up after seeing that it had been dropped by a plane flying above, heading east for a bit before circling back and heading west, dropping pamphlets as they flew. The natural barriers of the Ural Mountains had acted as a blocker for news, heading both westwards and eastwards. The only exception to this was the Republic of Zatoust, but even then their merchants tended to keep all non-essential information close to their chest. However, as proto-states coalesced in western Russia and east of the Urals, it became increasingly inevitable that there would be communication and interaction between the two areas, the disconnect between the expectations of interactions by the committee and the realities of the situation to the east. Um, however, it caused their pamphlets to cause more confusion among communities than inspiration and hope for a coming liberation. The winds of change howl. Move more divisions. Another tank division. Bloody hell, we're pumping them out nicely. But we're short. We're still, we're still short of a lot of them, though. Now, banking partners. We will gain access to additional funds. What good is money if we can't invest it? Any man worth his grain of salt and his mother knows that you can't simply stash money under the proverbial mattress, especially if the sheer volume of it comes anywhere close to what Octane's been bringing in ever since he assumed control. Some of the Grand Marshal's more economically minded friends have suggested a two-pronged method of dealing with what Octane calls suffering from success. <laughs> Anonymous bank accounts in the names of dead ROA officers or fabricated individuals will be created in Russian banks and slush funds will be sought abroad to help secure retirement money 
for the most honored of Russia's heroes, Octan included, of course, as well as to help pool foreign investments and keep the money in the hands of those wise enough to use it correctly. Very good. Now, what's this? Oh, yes, encourage agricultural mechanization. Very good. Thank you. Now, I have to do both of them. Damn it. Cashing out deals with the Fritzes. Our industrial equipment will begin to slowly improve. 1,000 units of infantry equipment and 400 units of anti tank equipment is added to the national stockpile. Looks like we'll have to read this one first. Now, what's in the game? Clark Moore had never been to Russia, he had never even thought of going to Russia in all of his 43 years spent on Earth, but when the general manager received a highly unusual communique from the chairman of the Provisional Commissariat of Western Russia, Mikhail Akhtan, requesting that his hockey team travel from Toronto to Samara to play a game against local Russians, he was surprised and initially reluctant. That is, until he saw the money Octan was offering that was enough to, well, overhaul the team and make way in the budget for better draft picks for the, the following year. That was just a start. Moore barely, barely waited a day before he wired his answer. Yes, the game itself was quite simple. The Russian team was filled with large, intimidating figures who looked more like soldiers than they did athletes. But despite the final outcome, a 4-0 win for the Canadians, Moore had been impressed with the performance of the Russians. He joked to himself that in a few more years, the Russians could even rival Canadian hockey talent. After the game, Moore and his coaches spent the evening at Octan's residence in Samara, a palace of decadence with the finest cigars and expensive vodka. As he was, hoarding the, as he was boarding the plane to uh, go back to Toronto, he was satisfied with the trip. But as he sat on the long flight, he couldn't help but remember choice sayings Octan had uttered that had made him uneasy. He had enjoyed his time in Russia, but decided that he wouldn't be returning for quite some time, rivaling the Canadians' pure fantasy. <laughs> Now, cashing out the old with the Fritzes, it's no secret that our military conquests in Western Russia have ruffled a few feathers to the west in the German giant. Despite their entropic slide into disarray, the Germans are still a power to be feared and respected. However, more importantly, we need to make sure that the very, very long list of favours that Mikhail Lockdown has earned from the Fritzes and Hanses of Germany need to be accounted for and cashed in, so to speak, before the Germans refuse to cooperate with us entirely. We'll start with the most wishy-washy and the ones who have the most to lose. Working our way down to the most corrupt border guard, whatever happens, we'll take whatever they're offering and more. The Grand Marshal will make sure that he always gets what he's owed. Good. Inner circle tension medium. I think after this episode, after the conclusion of this episode, I will finally just take the time to to just play and and find out what the fuck is going on with these regions and what the hell happens. Yeah. Training is going well. Good. Oh, thank you. Poverty rate. Yeah, probably just poverty rate. Now. Food and books for Russia. Political power plus 50. Our poverty rate will begin to slowly improve. We will receive foreign aid money. Some of the most laughable programs in the West are dedicated to the impoverished nature of the millions that suffer in Africa, Asia, and more regrettably, Russia. The Americans are certainly no fools, at least their, pol their politicians aren't, but the bleeding hearts behind Western charities intent on alleviating poverty certainly don't. The Grand Marshal has ordered the creation of an organization officially not associated with his government. The... Not gonna. I'll try it. The Organizatia Po Bezopasnotsi Roskugo Narona, or O or O B R N. In English, the Organization for the Security of the Russian People is what it will be called. That can nearly just be a secret police. Octan has announced to the people that through this organization, food and books for all of Russia will be made available. While this may be true, it's certainly not the intent of the NGO. Not only will foreign aid come through the OBRN and mysteriously disappear, it's a perfect front for the money laundering needs of some of Octan's friends. Yes, indeed. I'll put that. Also get this, yeah, I forgot about that, bloody hell. Hire foreign instructors, yes indeed. We won't have access to these decisions for uh, too much longer. Now. Property rate is going pretty well, though. Yeah. We'll definitely get it up one level. I'm still fucking bewildered that we didn't get up our poverty rate one level as Rodzevsky. Or did we? I think I did it late game. I think it was like 1975, because I waited a long time to attack as Rodzevsky. Yeah. I think I did get it up one level. Yeah. It took me longer than usual, though. Oh. The tired, the poor. Change immigration law to open immigration, which grants whatever that grants and changes refugee law to vetted entry which grants academic base monthly change plus 0.5 industrial expertise monthly change plus 0.5 and manpower plus 2000 
Uh, keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. The Grand Marshal, ever the shrewd statesman, has devised a plan to disrupt our German enemies to the west. By using his contacts in Moscovine, Octan has managed to encourage a number of people, refugees, patriots, or, other, or otherwise, to abandon the Reichskommissariat in favour of the land controlled by the committee. Not only will this bolster the available manpower for our factories and our armies, which seem to be growing by the day, the mass migrations of these refugees will seriously disrupt the Germans and their ability to control the so called porous border between us and their easternmost Reichskommissariat. Very good. I was worried at first that because we didn't have um, very good industry techs that we wouldn't have a, a, a good, you know, sizable army to attack uh, Omsk. But we're, we're looking pretty good. We've got 11 tank divisions. We've got um, 39 infantry divisions. I think we're going to be pretty good. Yeah. Now, oh. new business relationships, question mark. This will slightly increase our GDP growth. What is our GDP growth? 9.1%, yeah. It's no secret that the Committee for the Liberation of the Peoples of Russia is the dominant force in the West of Russia, and indeed perhaps throughout the rest of what was of what once constituted the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Back when Mikhail Oktan and his allies were etching out a meager existence around the city of Samara, a lot of the now Grand Marshal's friends enjoyed impartial and unbalanced agreements with Oktan, who tolerated these arrangements only because he had little choice in the matter. Now, however, with the might of Western Russia behind him and the rapidly recovering industrial power that has shown itself to come with the territory, Oktan is now in a position to renegotiate his prior arrangements. New business relationships are important, but the best of the best will only be offered to those who are willing to give and take. Good. Coup d'etat brings an end to the war. Interesting that Omsk renames a lot of the stuff, like Yekaterinburg is Ferdlovsk. Nizhny Tajil, uh, yeah, that's that stays the same, but um like I nearly think I feel I feel like Omsk would keep it as Ferdlovsk. I, like I don't get the whole Because like they're not really, you know, right wing quote unquote. They're just they just really want revenge on Germany. So I feel like the, the like the name change back to like kind of Zara stuff is kinda of weird. Now import heavy machinery. Now, the homeless tempest tossed. Manpower plus 10,000 and 1.2 um, thousand units of German basic infantry rifle is out of the national stockpile. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore send these, the homeless tempest tossed, to me. Refugees and Russian patriots aren't the only bodies that we'll be importing. Octan Assad have mercenaries all around the globe, encouraging them to come and work for him and him only. These mercenaries, kept loyal by Octan's seemingly bottomless pockets, will not only serve as a personal bodyguard to the Grand Marshal, but will also do the wet work. Oh, good for you, Iberia. That Octan deems either inappropriate or otherwise too important for his Russian subordinates to see through. After all, um, Octan's political... I nearly call him Poctan. Octan's physical rivals won't liquidate themselves. These mercenaries can be unscrupulous and uncouth at the best of times, but so long as they're getting paid, they'll stay in line. Good. Oh. That's all fine. Prepare for a conflict. Um, prepare the Vorkuta border. Establish your fortifications. Yes, do that. And the Vorkuta border. And additional reserves and the supply chain. Nice. Grand showdown, indeed. And, uh, survey eastern positions. Nice. We didn't get a whole lot more manpower than I thought we would. Yeah, we didn't get as much manpower as I thought we would from, um, going from Slip Leash to the Army of National Liberation. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, but we still have German bootlickers. Why? No wonder, we lose that as any other one. Yeah, there we go. I was wondering why. Yeah, we'd lose that as Zykov or Bonnie Chenko. I was going to say. Yeah, what the fuck? And now I don't have the the model as, as West Russia. Which is it? Thank you. Oh, damn it. What's this? D 
Decrease black market arms trading. Yeah, do that. And now get... Investigate corruption. I, I don't think there's a lower one than negligible. So don't do that. Uh, now we can be doing uh, all beside the golden lamp. Political power plus 50. Good, we need that. Gain base ability plus 10%. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Our towns and cities are burgeoning with people. Wilson is in every bloody game, I swear. Thousands of refugees are in the process of making new homes within our borders, and for the first time in decades, foreign companies are setting up shop and opening their doors to the public. Mercenaries have patrolled the wilderness alongside Russians, and it seems that almost overnight, Octan turned the western part of Russia into something that closely resembles a functioning society. Peoples and people and companies from all over the world, America, Japan, Germany, and elsewhere, are all attracted to Russia to turn a profit, and for the first time in a long time, hope and prosperity seem to be returning to what remains of the Russian nation. Yes, things aren't uh, going too bad at all. Like, this Octan Russia, Octan West Russia is not a bad West Russia at all. Obviously, it's way better. There's so many better ones. But still, these societal developments are coming along quite nicely. Better industrial equipment. Very good. What's that? Factory complexes? Modern industrial equipment. Hell yeah. Let's go. I'll uh, not put any more division into training just so we can uh, absorb some uh, losses. Advanced computing machine, very nice. I'll get that into the next one. Uh, what's this? Ah, yes. Infiltrate enemy intelligence service. Oh, pop those boosts, we need them. Nice. This will help us build up our political power as well, just before we go into conflict with Omsk. It makes sure we have enough to at least core them. Let's see, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we should have enough. Got a lot more manpower there. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Man, yeah, what else can we reduce? Yeah, civilian. I'm, I'm gonna figure out all that stuff. This is all looking really good. What's that? It's just, yeah, the stuff. Eastern Air Base Expansion. Sounds good to me, actually. 107 factories, very nice. Seven hundred and twenty three tanks in reserve, bloody hell. Oh, Omsk. The big boy of West Siberia. How many men do you have? You've got a lot of men, Omsk. But you haven't got more than me. I'd actually uh cancel this off and build some forts. Omsk has got a very nice army. pretty fast, right? Yeah, seven days. Fifty-eight billion dollar GDP! I mean, we might have to bleed them? I don't think we will. Can you peacefully unite? I'll be able to tell pretty fast. No, no, you're not. You're not peacefully uniting at all. No. 
Oh, my favorite event! Arms condemns us, yes. To the surprise of absolutely no one. We're doing very well, though. Very well indeed. Preparation of Riyadh. I'll let them come for us, yeah. Not as much time as that. I want as much time as I can get to build these forts. I wish there was an option when you were like when you're preparing for conflict at like regional super region to gather up all the forts in your area and just like stick them on the border with the enemy. Look at all the forts up here. They're, they're just going to waste. They're completely useless. I see the I see the line of forts that they built that we built though. It's not too bad at all. McKinley invasion. No, that's not happening. Yeah, they can't peace for you nice. Goodbye, Nico. It's been fun. Training. We've got a lot of political power now. We have. We should have enough. We didn't even get fucking logistics or anything, did we? No, <laughs> we didn't. Bloody hell! Sloppiest game ever. What are you waiting for? Now he may actually have one minute left, yeah. It's May, bro. Let's go. Are we gonna have to come for you? Okay. Wasn't really my intention, but whatever. Here, let me tag over to you. Yeah, uh, how are you doing? Oh, what's the story? Nearly. You're getting there. You're getting there. That's fine. No. Keep building up those forts. We need them badly.
Oh, vacuum tube computing, very nice. Improved academic base, fantastic. Here we go. Winner takes all. Conflict on the horizon. How's it going, Spear? You haven't collapsed, have you? That'd be bad. Almost a $60 billion GDP. Go on us. Treating wounds. What's that, like field hospital buffs? In the military tree? No. What is it then? Healthcare? Yeah. Band aid. Prioritize military and industrial development. Come on, Lex Mike, we're almost ready to go. We actually have a decent line of forts here. Again, like I said, look, look, look at all this stuff around Vyatka, like, god damn it. You just be able to scoop it up and, like, transfer it, all of it, to wherever you want to go. Wherever you want it to go. Here we go. Oh, they're attacking. Oh, they're attacking. Are we losing? We are. That's bad. You attack there. I think we'll just kind of... You can attack. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, god, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. It's always good when you get a really nice tank, atta uh, tank attack. Could you imagine being Omsk? Like, your whole thing is like incredible military, like defeat Germany, and then you get run over by a bunch of glorified bandits. Being circled. Well, it's even Air Force, you should probably use that. Human is open. Probably take that. Lenin's body captured. What can we do with it? Why didn't they do something with it? Auction him off! Oh my god! Pavel Suvalov. Which grants what? That's fucking hilarious.
Are they gonna capitulate now? No, fuck. Are they not? I kinda thought they would. Nikola Lockdown, after conquering the tomb area in West Siberia, has decided to sell the body of infamous revolutionary and father of the Soviet Union, Lenin. His body was sold to an, an anonymous bidder in the private auction in the city of Kazan for roughly 500 million US dollars. Rumor has it that the body used a Honduran offshore account, though it seems impossible to trace where the money came from. Regardless, journalists around the world now surround Octan's personal home or are looking into leads as to who bought the body. The sweet smell of profit. Oh my fucking god, that's hilarious. I haven't taken Nizhny yet, fucking no wonder. You tank? Yeah. Aha! Time to die! Sorry, besides the door. Casualties? 70k to 249, bruh. Nizhny needs to fall. Like badly. Get the Air Force. Uh, we do actually have air base up here, so go up here. Attack bombers is. No. All that stuff too, yeah. Right. Still not capitulating, eh? Cancel all these forts, obviously, we don't need that anymore. They can suck up a lot of casualties. I don't remember Amsk being this hard to capitulate before. They must have changed it or something. They were never this hard before. Now, what's this? Yes, allocate education funding. Very nice. Kazakhstan tore all of that. Yes. 85 days, damn. Russian unification. 20% base stability, 20 Navy experience. It will be, will be known as the Russian state. Interesting. Haven't seen any uh, 
when the uh, uniform known as the Rush, just the Russian state so far. Mind you, we have uh, Savinkov and Kaiserich. We have the Russian National State. Under uh, Rodzevsky, we have the Russian National Republic. Influence of Kazakhstan, military intervention. And no new, no new um, thingy. Damn, that sucks. Now the rebirth continues. But alright lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Shout out to our Patreon, McCready. I shall see you down in the comment section of this video. I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.